ready to achieve great heights, then you're in the right place. Welcome to Power Your Performance, the podcast where we dive deep with leaders in the gaming world and beyond and learn the techniques they use to power their lives. I am your host, Gary Kleinman. Excited to have Trevor May with us on Power Your Performance. Trevor is an esteemed pitcher for my favorite New York Mets. Um, having been there now for, uh, you just finished your first season, and going to yes. start your, your second, and a gamer creator streamer. And if there's anybody that sits at the intersection of health, wellness, and nutrition, and sport and gaming, it's you. How you doing? Doing good, how are you? I'm great. It's great. Good to see you. Yeah. So tell me, yeah. you started baseball first or gaming first? Which, which did we go back to your childhood or... Was it Little League and gaming? Was it gaming and then Little League? They might have happened at the exact same time. Yeah. Uh, I was five my first year of uh, T-ball, and uh, that's about the same time. My brother, who was 11, 12-ish at the time, got our first, we got our Super Nintendo. So I was six. I remember being six years old with our Super Nintendo, so it might have been slightly behind baseball um, wow. for Christmas. But, we, yeah, my first ever game was, was uh, Donkey Kong and... Uh, and his was oh what did he get he got i think he got one of the mario games and then a couple of years later we got the 64 we always had tandem gifts we were yeah. close enough in age and uh, he got killer instinct which was the big mortal Kombat competitor and i got donkey kong then too they donkey did. kong country <laughs> so i was big into donkey kong evidently i haven't played it since but uh yeah i think i think baseball wins by just a little bit but they've been parallel pretty much my whole life what was the first game you beat him at or vice versa Oh, I don't, I don't remember ever beating him a killer instinct. Uh, beat him in a game. I think Halo might have been the first time that I was like consistently be able to beat him. Um, we played an NFL Blitz a little bit. Uh, I think I got him a couple times, but he beat me pretty handily a lot. I did not handle losing but well. Uh, that was very, very competitive. I always call it being competitive, but I also just don't like to not be happy. So I was one of those. I was the kid who was like would, would rather cheat than lose, uh, and. Uh, you know, it's so, so funny you said that because I um, just did uh, an interview with uh, Marianne Eng Engel, who is a sports yeah. psychologist. And the two things she said was some people hate to lose and some people that do hate to lose might cheat. <laughs> yeah. so you just proved her, her right, Trevor, yeah. quite quickly. I would rather, I'd rather turn off the game. I was that guy. There Walk that up, guy. press, reset. Well, Maybe. interesting. From a health, wellness, nutrition standpoint, did you ever put that conflict under control did you ever kind of just did it ever mellow out and if, and, and if so what helped you do that yeah it mellowed out a little bit but honestly even to this day I, I'm not I'm slow to like play anyone in a, like a game one-on-one -on -one. oh right I would much rather do co-op two-on-two or like play team games because um it's just uh, I was always as the reason I never got really into like golf or like <laughs> tennis because it's all on you uh, and the baseball. I like I like being a cog in the machine and I like te the teamwork part of things. But I also liked everything not always being your fault. I guess when I was young. So um, and honestly, I still have a, a unique relationship with losing uh, or or like failing maybe right. maybe not losing because I've come to the conclusion now being a major leaguer for as long as I have been that like. You just only have so much control over a win or a loss. You just never want it to be your fault. Right. Because um, yeah, I was going to say, obviously, you know, you're sitting on the mound and stuff happens, whether it's yeah. an error behind you or you don't hit your, your spot or whatever yeah. it is. That'd be hard, you know, if, yeah. if you're that competitive with yourself yeah. to, to, to deal with that. So and, and, and to leave it on the mound, right? Like yeah. you get in the dugout and get in the locker room, you go home. Do you really forget about it? Yeah, no, I don't, sir. I don't forget about it. I'm yeah. honest. I just don't. I think that's a complete. I mean, I think some guys, no one fully forgets. But right. Some guys right. just are able to kind of move on or like be distracted or work, move on to something else, like focus on what they're doing in front of them uh, uh, a little bit easier than others. But I think that if they do go back to thinking about it, they'll still be like, it'll still get that response. Uh, it's just that ability to like refocus on something else. I think that is the difference. I don't think it ever 
no one ever forgets this whole short memory thing i, I love when people say because i'm always like it's not really a thing it's a misnomer a little bit uh <laughs> but it, i do understand the idea of like not letting it affect the next thing as much like minimizing that that is important that's yeah. the important part uh but yeah I, I i have a very strong emotional connection to my 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 play i do i really well, do I, I certainly from a professional baseball player professional athlete at the level that you've obviously achieved for quite some time you got to have that fire you got to have that that edge and that anger um because it motivates you every time you go out so you wouldn't want to lose it completely i guess it's yeah. it's more about do you go to meditation do you go to other kinds of uh, modalities to calm yourself down and then not let it psychologically affect you in a negative manner uh i have spent a lot of time um with with meditation i actually just had this conversation really in depth today uh about handling uh a lot of the uh like this past season for example was was a lot more um external uh, external noise there's a lot more external noise in, in the in the new york market um especially with you know the mets and, and their history recently and yeah. a lot of good players you see that's generally the the feeling is maybe underperforming a few years in a row right um, and high expectations not really being met and coming kind of into that situation, kind of in the middle, right. um, with some, with well, some you went fluid, to new ownership, new ownership. Yeah. And, lots of fluid, and, lots of fluid. And, 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 being and a new. lot of stories about the new owner and you know, his, oh, his embattlement. And, I mean, and you're in a major media scrutiny major market media between thing, Yankees, certain media Mets, Giants, outlets Jets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a lot. You're dealing with some people maybe that, that are, closer to paparazzi and and tabloids than uh, uh sports news outlets at right. times uh they're more focused on the you know figuring out why the clubhouse is a mess than the actual game a lot of stuff like you're you're kind of just wading through a lot of like you gotta we gotta learn to like fend off stuff that you're like that's just stupid i'm right. not gonna we're not we're gonna let's talk about other things um and that's a skill that you have to learn you can really only learn here and I wouldn't even put LA in the same way, even though it's a huge no, New market. York's, no, New York's a fish New York's, bowl. New York's definitely, you know, Chicago has its times, but yep. like New York's the, the, you know, even Boston's similar, but like the the Northeast is a different beast. So and it was especially New York, because you do have that underlying Yankee Met rivalry. That oh yeah. Spills out into everything. You don't really get that in the angels and the Dodgers, right? That's very, very true. They're yeah. not, they're, they're not like making fun of each other the whole time too. Like, no. They're not. Yankees fans have no real skin in the game for Mets, but they'll just make fun of you, even though because you're on the team, even though they don't really care. Yeah, you know they don't I mean? care. Like, you have so, those people too, and and it's, in your own fan base, and it's 24 square miles where you know L.A. the, the Dodger base Brawling is, and, you know, way up north, way south. So yeah, you know, having right. spent a lot of time in New York and living there, yeah, it's. Uh, but did you think about that before you said, yeah, I'm going to take this shot with the Mets. I'm going into this fishbowl. It, it, it was you it know as cognizant you, as it turned out to be. Do you? think it was just I, so i knew it was going to be that much like the amount was not surprising it was it was the dynamic and learning who those you know like they're just certain there's just certain people where you're like i'm not going to talk to that person as much as other people like i don't trust that person as much as i trust you know that was isn't a thing really in minnesota there's just not as many people yeah but just generally they're just kind of they're nice a little bit more laid well, back they're a lot nicer <laughs> they're just, yeah they're just as a citizen just you know? yeah they're just they're, they're, they would rather like even if they have strong feelings and stuff, they usually give you a little bit. They're like, you know what? I'm upset, but it's okay. Is it that big of a deal at the end yeah. of the day? But New this York? live and die. It's, it's a little more live and die in New York. There's more passion. Yeah. They'll tell you that first. Everyone will say that more passion. And I just need everyone to know that this isn't a, a negative thing at all. It's just different. Yeah. And you have to navigate it differently or it can be just a, too much. Like it's just exhausting. It could be exhausting oh, at a time. If you it's really want to be a great player, you have to find a way if you want to succeed in the market, you have to find a way to kind of either just remove yourself from a lot of the noise or mute it. Yep. And were some of the teammates it. helpful in the transition that had been there for a while, or did they kind of say, <sighs> a little bit? You're, you're um, on your you're on your own, dude. You you figure out how honest, you're going to make it. <laughs> it's a lot of young guys that don't have a lot of experience, anyways. Right. Like they right. do, and so they're still trying to navigate how to do that too. They've been part of it, so like we had these conversations a lot. Like, should we all delete our twitters together? Should right. we, you know, like <laughs> things like that? Something I'm never going to do. I'm very active. I really value my ability to have open and honest conversations with strangers about things that and give context for things i think it's important and that it's valuable to do that even if it's infuriating at times i, st I just feel like it's something i like to do and i need to do it so uh 
that wasn't going to go anywhere. And so we've actually talked a lot about how do you navigate um, on a day-to-day basis, like calming yourself down, your, your nervous system down, because some games like, for example, the September 11th game last year was huge, massive 20 years right. against the Yankees at home. We're in a pennant, we're, we're, we're trying to win the division too. We're trying to come back here. Um, and it's like all this stuff. And I'm just like, don't, don't blow that game. And I did. I blew that game. It, like it came to it, it came to a head. I was like, I'm going in, in the exact situation that I was dreading. And you got to find a way to like. And maybe that's why it happened that way, right? You I mean the, oh, your, your your fear oh, actually be you 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 self realized your own fear. Exactly. You know? Um. And and once you're in the situation that you've been dreading the whole time, the chances that you're able to lock in and forget about it are, are zero. Yeah. Especially were you, in that situation. Were you sitting in the pen going, I'm playing, don't call on me. I'm not. I'm not I, honestly, not in the sixth inning, in. I saw the scores. I'm like, no, I'm going in. <laughs> you know? I've had two days off too. 100. There's I'm no. Gonna, there's I'm, no way. I knew the whole time. I knew it was coming. That helped a little bit. Um. And then something. Aaron Judge, of all people, of course. I honestly, if someone's gonna do it, please be him. Yep. Right, you don't want it to be the pitcher on the other right. team or something, or like the guy they just called up. Right. Um, if you're going to give it up, give it up to their best player. Yep. Uh, uh, and he hit a pitch that he'll never hit it probably out again. That same <laughs> pitch probably never hit it out. It was crazy. It should have been a ball. I shouldn't have swung at it, and he took me deep on it. So I t- like it's always tipped in the caps. It's always this stuff, uh, but like. So do you say anything to him as he's rounding the base? Are you going? Oh, no, nah, 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 no you're I, just, you don't want to. You're not even going to look at him and give him that that that. I, that at that point, I was just like, "Oh man!" <laughs> I was more in like the, the the that thing I was worried about just happened. Like it was it was a it was not relief. It was just like, "What the hell? Why?" So is that what but, you're thinking as you're trotting out to the mound? I mean, because we'll we'll talk about this as you game and you and you stream and what have you. Are some of those thoughts the same? So you're you're running out to the mound. You're going, "Ah, I've been thinking about. It. It's been sitting in my head for a day or two, and and here I am. It's it's the 11th of September." And I want to pitch, but this is the thought process I have in my head. Is yeah, it, I, it, it, it it was one of those days. I was so emotionally keyed up that there was no way I wasn't going to be able to think, think along those lines. Um, and I have I have that moment or once or twice a year, like just where whatever it is, one day you're just super for whatever reason. Yep. And uh, uh, sometimes you're just like in your head, you're like, man, it would be really nice to get skipped over today. <laughs> <laughs> Some days you just need to, you, maybe we get someone who's just, for whatever reason, I'm having one of those days where I'm just, I cannot calm myself down. Uh, it's something that I naturally have. I'm very, I'm very, I don't want to say high strung. Um, anxiety has been something in my life that has been a constant, um, working hard on that, always a pro, uh, work in progress. Um, but even the meditation stuff, I did that for a very long time. It helped me manage ADD. Okay. Um, I was undiagnosed until I was 29. Wow. And then I got medication and which, went a really long way no but it wasn't a stimulant medication it was basic it was called stratera it's it's a different type of situation that helps for about a year or two um and then it's just nothing it's got got, came back got worse um and then this off season i actually got prescribed to uh, um stimulant medication so that going the last three months or so have been i've noticed a big big uh change in in uh, my build, like my days were just really inconsistent and that would translate into the baseball field like i just said i have a day i wake up groggy it feels like i didn't sleep well even if i did and i'm like what's going on it's just i'm very emotionally struggling and then my add is at 10. so managing that was what i used meditation before that got me to the major leagues i started doing that in 2012. i mean that's a, i mean to, to struggle with both of those anxiety and add and get to the level that you're at uh, professionally is is remarkable, right? I mean that that's, I mean, that's, yeah. that's just remarkable, and to overcome, which we'll get into, you know, the the, the major surgery you had. I mean, mm-hmm. how does you know get having your elbow re- reconstructed essentially fit into all that? You know, you've got ADD, you've got anxiety, you've got to be thinking, can I throw as fast as I did before? Is it really going to be successful? Mm-hmm. I mean that that had to be remarkably difficult. Uh, as you were not only having the surgery, but your rehab. Yeah, uh, that's a very big, the, the, that question mark around, am I going to be as good as it was before? Thank God we've gotten so far with the surgery and like the rehab programs. And uh, Dr. Meister down in Dallas, who did my surgery, is pretty much the cream of the crop these days with his program, even though it's a little slower than most he's got a really good track record. So that was actually, those fears were, were, were taken care of pretty early in the process. Okay. What really helped me though, was knowing that I wasn't going to be in a major league game in that season, 
Like oh. it was not going to happen. Right. So like my timing worked out well in that case. When I blew blew out my elbow, I went and got an MRI and they knew they're like right. it's gone. Like most people have like partial tears, a, a vertical tear along right. the along the tendon, so right. it's like splitting, not coming apart. So you can rehab that stuff. There was no gray area for me. They're like, just get surgery. It'll That's good. Be, it'll be straightforward. That's actually was, good because if you would have yes. rehabbed and then had to have surgery, oh yeah, and that, it, and that and that would mess you wanna, with your mind. You don't want to dance around. Yeah, you exactly. don't want to. You just go in and do that. But were you able to even game as you were rehabbing, or did you lose both of the things that you love? Uh, so I'm very fortunate that. A lot of people think this is the other way, but controllers are actually not great when you're coming off. Okay. Um, but a mouse isn't like, cause I'm, I'm moving from the shoulder. Right. So I've always been kind of an arm low sensitivity guy. So mm -hmm. uh, actually I, I asked about three weeks in, I was like, can I take the, the wrist brace off at this point? As we started to unlock it and I was starting to move it a little bit. They're like, he's like, Hey, if it doesn't hurt, man, he goes, if you get sore and stuff, please do. But he goes, I trust you. You're smart. Just don't. And I was like, wow, this is easy. And the more I did it, the better it felt. And it's it's crazy. He's like, anything that works your forearm out a little bit, even if it's just tiny bit, you're just moving really lightly back and forth, it's probably good. Just don't overdo it. Don't hurt yourself. And you'll, you'll he goes, you'll be able to tell if you hurt yourself. And trust me. And it's crazy. Three weeks after that, when I got the brace off or when we went all the way locked, and then what you do is you come out and you haven't straightened your arm in six weeks. So then they go, all right go like we're gonna straight we're not gonna push you let go and usually you're like uh and i went really wow oh i'm like really huh i'm like yeah maybe move all, all that movement i've been doing there was a couple not nights in the middle of the night i woke up because there's like a little lock and i bumped it or something that unlocked so i wake up in the middle of the night and i'd be like this like oh god lock it back in because i didn't i was you know you're trying to follow the, the program but it, usually it's like so far in the being cautious area that you don't it's not really necessary so that was all good i got very lucky i heal very well usually i've always had my whole life scrapes and but do you and take things. anything on a general supplement basis either <sighs> athletically for game i mean you're not doing like vitamin d I mean, and d. i do I, I do supplement with that stuff but i've uh i've that's been five last five years or so so i supplement with d i take uh um uh um mariva uh for joints um i take and inflammation i take uh i do athletic greens um and and uh something called resync which is the beet powder nitrous mm -hmm recovery drink so i do a lot of that stuff i supplement a lot of the things with that multivitamin um but but nothing too like i'm not like one of those people who's taking a huge bag of pills every day just to replace everything i lost the day before and you're not dry, uh, and you're not dry scooping whey protein and yeah i'm not, not, not and i do i do i i supplement with whey protein honestly a lot of people are like oh you protein for the recovery i'm like that's an added benefit honestly i just like convenience and it's a nice little snack yeah yeah well, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I literally had a muscle mech earlier. I did go work out today, so that's an added benefit, but also it's going to get me to lunch. So to, that's the main reason I do it because I can drink it. I don't have to go anywhere or do anything. I can right, it's simple. It's, 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 a, it's simple delivery yeah. system. So yeah. now do you just never think about the elbow? Uh, I mean, you just, you just go out and there's no hesitation. You just go out and throw and you hit what yeah. you hit and you do it. It's one of those things like, I don't know. I think maybe we just said, hey, someone said once he goes if it goes it goes like i have to go i've i've bought into this thing that i'm a pitcher this is something that happens to pitchers and i'm i'm not going to like take the foot on the gas make myself not as good as i can be just because i'm afraid of that happening again and if it does i frankly at this point at this point i've gotten so much out of my elbow if it went again i take happy. that as a sign for the most part <laughs> uh, probably at this point and i'd be okay with that yeah because i've gotten a lot i'm at a point now in my career going on my eighth year in the ninth year in the major leagues overall eighth year of service time uh that like you know, I've had a, I've had a, you got a, a good, it's a, a good, lot. it's a good run and you're I've still made a good run. Well. Yeah. And I, I'm I, at this point, I'm like, I'm not saying borrow time, but like, you know, it's all, it's all house money at this point. Like, <laughs> let's just, let's have a good time. Let's enjoy doing this as long as we can. Cause you know, as many guys approach their mid thirties and thirties in baseball, that's when you hit that cliff and you're just falling into, into my body hurts oblivion. So until that happens, I'm going to keep having fun. But the big thing that actually got through me, the surgery mostly though, yeah, was right. the idea that, I now have a bunch of time to do something that I wouldn't have been able to do had I played, been playing baseball. And what is that? I just started the whole, that's when I built the stream.
Yeah, so tell me about that. So yeah, you obviously work out and you prepare for the season. You stretch and you lift and you do all those things um, under the auspices, obviously, of the team because mm-hmm. of the responsibility and the contracts and everything else. Do you also do something similar for your, your streaming that you're prepared for? Do you stretch? Do you, um, you know, work on your back? Do you do massage? Is there any regimen that you look at uh, from a health perspective to prepare for streaming? Um, back then, no, uh, because <laughs> I was doing so much of the other stuff. It kind of just like translated. Uh, I, was, I was at the field for three, four hours every day doing rehab and stretching and You didn't yoga need to do things. that, right. I didn't need to. Um, in the off season when I'm like taking time off, uh, um, it's past a certain point, um, like taking three, four weeks off where I'm like, go be a couch potato and sit in your chair. I have a very nice, I have a, I bought a very nice chair cause I spent in it. I spent a lot of time at my Herman Miller. That's right. one of the best chairs I've ever had Uh great ergonomic chair. So that's helped a lot. Do have a standing desk? I do pop it up every once in a while. Those have helped as well, but honestly, it's just don't be stagnant for a lot of period of time. So I actually did a 16 hour stream the other day Jeez. for, uh, for, we did some charity stuff for Ukraine. And, and I also love, there was a new big Minecraft project that I was invited to. And I wanted to go up, start it with a bang and be like the one that's on the longest and, had a, and I was that, compe- a that competitive came out <laughs> yeah yeah i wanted to be the best um not only that last of these same people i played with them a year ago almost just over a year ago now and i was really bad like no clue what i was doing and i played a lot in the last year i've been really enjoying this and now it's funny some of the people that were with me have seen what i'm doing they're like dude yeah. Back okay. back then, you were just an easy kill, and now I'm afraid you're going to kill me. <laughs> so I was like, mission accomplished. Thank you for saying that. You have no idea how much that means to me. Oh, that's great. Um, yes. But in terms of of for that, so one of our strategies was every two hours we had a we had a little bit of a, a timer set, and it was give ourselves three to five minutes. I'm going to go grab a snack, or I'm going to go to the use this as a bathroom break. And then we're going to stand. I did some stretching in front of the screen. Um, I, we did one thing of a minute of meditation, just like. Uh, moving the point of light up and down your body for a minute. Um, and I just like basically turned my mic off, camera off, put on a, like a little relaxing mu- music and did 90 seconds of it and just like centered just so, because as it was getting later, I was getting more frustrated easily cause I was tired. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to do that more. I think I could do a much better job. Um, but it's crazy. A lot of the, cause I've been really into Minecraft recently. A lot of these, a lot of these people who have been doing this for 10 years, they're now late thirties, even in the early forties. Right. And they're very, because it's a game that if you let it, you could just go. There's no right. like points to jump off right. if you don't make them. Um, and so there's a couple guys that I'm taking, uh, taking a little bit of, uh, what they do when they play and one has every hour on the hour, it's time to stand up and we all drink our water. And then they, they like stop what they're doing, go full screen and they make the stream stream, do it with them. It's like, we're taking a break and they take a break every hour and it's on purpose, purposeful every time, which. Well, I get, and the older you get, the more you need it. And if the average yeah. age of a gamer is 37, you know, yeah. then that, you know, it, it it's going to happen. I mean, you're going to yeah. need. And it's you. a major issue in gaming. People like, especially the kids that are like 21 who are trying to grow their streams or they're just got some experience or just got some love and people are starting to come in. They want to play for 15, 16, 70 hours every day. Every day, and and they're playing not in your Herman Miller chair. They're playing in all these other, you know, um, like a wood uh, chair from the a, a wood chair, or, or you know, an off the rack chair from an office supply company. I won't mention names because yeah. I won't mention names uh, that are not ergonomically sound. And then if you look at the hardware, you know, it's yeah. really you know, uh, keyboards and what have you are not great for your wrist. And people every, are turning and they're and doing they're, all this other stuff. And they're, yeah, and they're thinking, you know. Uh, from a health and wellness company perspective that we are, we look at a lot of the younger gamers are invincible, as I'm sure when you were younger, you thought, oh, I'm invincible, right? My hit, my wrist may hurt, but I'm not putting anything on it, right? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not sleeping, but I'm not going to help go to sleep, even if it's a natural supplement where you're, you know, you're not focusing, right? You know, people yeah. are knocking out, uh, you know, Red Bulls and monsters and, and what have you. But as you get older, you know, um, and the guys that you're, you know, you're referring to, it's critically important, especially if you've got other things to do when you're not streaming uh, and playing, you you just can't sit at a chair and, and be stretched and be limber and do all the things you otherwise want to do. So, um, exactly. Do you talk about that with the people that, you know, that follow you in your stream is, is, hey, what are you doing 
to stay limber that you know it's great to play with you guys but do you feel a responsibility or a desire if not a responsibility to just notate the fact that hey you got to be healthy you got to you know don't drink red bulls maybe take some vitamin d or whatever the that that supplementation is i mean yeah um i mean i think that i have a unique i definitely have a unique uh, uh approach to these things too because I inherently have to stay in a certain shape or have to think like be intimately aware of how my body feels at all times because I need to be ready to pitch every day. So even being a reliever, not just a baseball player, just being a reliever, like I, I have to be ready every day. So like it's programmed into me to check in constantly. And so maybe I take that for granted, just like it's a natural way that I, I am and I'm able to make those decisions on the fly, but people that don't have the motivation, it's just like for their general health or long-term health, but they're not having to go compete. Like the motivation isn't as big as it is for me. So talking about it, I think I can get better at it. I have, I have done it a good amount. And I do talk about, I talk a lot about the mental side too. The mental side has been a big part of me. Uh, like the, the toll that it takes when you don't go and like you're only worried about playing the game all of the time and getting better all the time that it's important to take a, when you're a creative person or you're trying to come up with ways to make funny content or something, getting away from it is actually your best way to do that. Those things are things I've talked about a lot, a lot, but I think that as I move forward and as baseball becomes, um, you know, at some point um, in the not so distant future, I'm not going to be a player. I mean, I'm not going to say tomorrow, but you know, it's not going to be 10 years from now right. uh, um, that I will then have to pass on a lot of the baseball information I had to, to younger kids about taking care of themselves. And I think that I'm going to continue doing the gaming thing. And it's going to be really important that I do it there too, because I just have a lot of, I have a lot to offer there, a lot of value that I've learned over the well, years. You do. And, and, and you, and you come from well. a unique perspective, as you just referenced from having uh, you know, professional athletes. And one of the things that gamers like is that they can be successful without having your skill set, so to speak, and, and your muscular definition and mm-hmm. just the inherent skills to be a professional athlete. Not everybody can do that. But you can work on gaming skills a little bit easier and yeah. become proficient. So to have your background educationally and as a role model is is critically important. I mean, yeah. it's, um, and I, I know you take that seriously. Um the more you do it, the better it is probably, you know, that yeah. more and more people want that. Um, do you also find that your teammates game a lot? I mean, is there as much gaming in the clubhouse and on the road that everybody says, you know, you got all this downtime, everybody's gaming? Yeah, um, there's a good amount of guys, for sure. Um, a lot of guys bring their consoles with them in their little cases. Um, I'd say there's probably five to five to eight on every team that brings about um, some have bigger groups than others. Um, I know I've heard a lot of stories about the angels being a huge, cause my trout's a big, big gamer. And he's, yep. he's very, very, um, he's very like uh, open with just like getting guys equipment to trip play stuff with him. So like, there's been times <laughs> where we bought everyone laptops and he's a, he's an awesome, from what I've heard playing with Mike trout is awesome. So, uh, but like, if there's a new game that comes out that he really likes, he's like, man, I wish some more people would play. He'll buy like his, the guys who like, Oh, I don't have an Xbox. He's like, well, here's one. Now you have to play with me. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's a group. Um, and it's becoming more and more, it's the stigma is getting less and less. And it's, it's cooler now because you know, Oh, yeah. streamers are make yeah, a lot of yeah. money now and, and they're, yeah. they're I, you know I've been in gaming icons. you know probably six seven years and um, nobody understood what the hell I was doing you know six yeah. seven years ago you know gaming was a cry for help you know yeah. now it's a career and then if you look at all the ways that gaming is incorporated into business and into medicine and and everything yeah. else it's 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 pretty significant I think I think the issue happens to be how do you balance your life in gaming as opposed to the 16 17 hours instead of studying or whatever that happens to be and and that's like anything else where do you strike the balance right mm-hmm. um, do you ever feel that that balance is um, challenged? Oh, <laughs> daily, especially with, um, I'm going to be honest, it's been a year or two since I've been this into a game uh, to where I could sink, where I could just lose six, seven hours without name? even blinking. And, you know, like we said, I'm, you know, I'm almost 33 years old. It shouldn't be that easy. Um, when I was at, in high school, I played World of Warcraft like this. Uh, we have a running joke that I played WoW until like one in the morning the night before our district championship game we were playing a team we had 10 run twice uh and they beat us we lost our first game of the year we were like 19 and 0 or something i pitched i pitched terribly and a bunch of scouts were there and my mom's like you missed out on a million bucks because you played wow that night <laughs> and i'm like that hurts and i but at the same time it all worked out thank god but um 
and I don't think it was completely true, but she was a little bit like, you, you know, it was, it was at times I was like spending a lot of time. I still kept my grades up and stuff, but it, it took, took a lot out of me, um, um, in terms of time. And now I'm, I'm, you know, I'm married and I have my family and, and, uh, uh making sure we all have time for each other. And then I'm turning it off regularly or, or, we're, what being, is we're being told to turn it off. Being, I don't want to get there. That's the thing. I don't want Let's her to be like, not. hey, could you not play games tonight? Uh, uh, so, but scheduling has been big. Putting on my calendar, she can see like I'm planning on doing a session. Like on Monday when I did the long one, I said, hey, on Monday, I'm going to do this. Um, this is launching this time. I think it's a good way to knock these three things out, raise the money for charity. We were planning on doing that anyways. Uh, uh, let's do, I'm going to do it all at once, but just know that like you might need to bring me a meal. <laughs> just, just so you know and she's like you know what i'm okay i know I'm okay I, this isn't like it was supposed to be six hours and it turned into 11 that's when you get into trouble yeah that, that, so that, that. scheduling has been and big. you were supposed um, to go out for dinner with her someplace with other people I would, right <laughs> i would never miss that that's one thing that's also on the schedule so yeah uh, the scheduling has been big um and i think i would highly recommend any kid any any guy out there who wants to really maximize how good you're you are how fresh and how good qual high quality streams are find that wherever that limit is and then just give yourself a couple of gimmies this is something that actually uh ben lupo dr lupo who's on Tw youtube big 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 streamer he uh, uh i've learned from him and his family is he gets he gets like a mulligan a weekly mulligan to where he can say i'm babe i'm really into this game can i play for two three four hours long can i just extend this into the evening and you guys go to bed you put Charlie, his son to bed and you just handle it that night. Just give me one. And I'll tell you when you come in and she's like, okay, yeah, you get one. But like every other time you got to stay within your, your limits for your yeah. work because we're setting work life balance and he's done a great job with it. It works really well for him. So we actually have done something similar to where as long as I'm good. saying, Hey, and I'm going to go do this thing. Right. Uh, uh, then That's we're good. good. So, and, and we're going to run out of time soon. One suggestion you have for the, your fans that, that, that follow you and play with you from a health, wellness, and perspective. What's your suggestion to them? Ooh. Um, if you, content creation or not, uh, I think t retouching on that thing I just said, uh, uh, having kind of a schedule or just like having an idea of when would be a good time for you to get off, even if it's in a few hours um, and blocking out that time makes it a lot more enjoyable. And honestly, it makes, when you have like a goal of something you're trying to accomplish in a game, even if it's just relax for a bit, uh, uh, makes it just feel much more fulfilling in my opinion. So I would say definitely just try to give yourself some sort of time frame, And, and if you can, if it's possible, because you really love gaming, get it scheduled and two, uh, um, be purposeful with your breaks. So, um, stand up, move around. Uh, um, if you have to go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom. Uh, uh, and that will also make your gaming experience even more fun as someone with ADD who gets fixated and I, I get really locked into a game and I'm super passionate about things. I just don't want to stand up yep. ongoing problem. One good little tip I'll give yep. phone that <laughs> set your phone to go off yep. because one thing that is more powerful than that the thing you want to sit there is when your phone goes off, your natural thing is I have I to, got, I got to get care to of it. it. Yeah. I got to, I have it. to get to it. That yeah. will override everything. So your phone alarm, the one that wakes you up in the morning, be your strongest motivator for, for That's getting fantastic. up and taking a break. Hey, Trevor, I love the time spent. Uh, when you're down playing the angels, I'll come see you. All right. Uh, keep gaming and we'll, uh, we'll follow up soon. All right, man. Thanks I stay me. well. Appreciate it. Hey, be well, man. It's good to see you. Thanks for listening. This podcast is part of the MAP Esports Podcast Network and produced by Innovation Media Enterprises. Please be sure to leave us a review and follow us on your favorite podcast player.